next guest. We got a great reaction to him the last time he was on. Uh, so he's back. He's still looking for the meaning of life, but he's now also struggling with the pressures of fame. Please welcome Michael Harding. <laughs> Stronger, I'm sure no. you can organize it. No, I'm fine. Yeah. So listen, the last time you were here, you were, you were talking about your books, there yeah. in the Lakes, which yeah. has been a phenomenal success. And I kind of I follow you through your column in the yeah. Times a little bit. I suspect that I get the feeling that you spent the summer going around arts festivals, being fated by kind of the literary women of a certain age who yeah. have your book and your yeah. poeticism and all that. Would that be a fair yeah. estimation? Oh yeah. 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 She, she had a red hat, and I met her in West Cork, and she interviewed me, she was a journalist, and uh, she was very intimate, you know, in the interview. It was on News Talk, and uh, I said, what are you doing later? And she said, I'm, I'm going to, you know, such and such a, a thing, and I went to it, and she wasn't there. <laughs> and she never turned up, i never seen her since. Right. But you have that. I, I really, know, to be honest, um, like, what I did for the summer was nothing. I really did nothing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And people say, what are you doing for the summer? And from the 1st of June, I said, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> you know? Because, and I did nothing everywhere. <laughs> no, I, like, I did nothing. I went to Donegal. I went to Donegal. There was a lovely day in Donegal in July. And I was, I was coming down the road through Crowley. And it was so good a day. Uh, I stopped at the filling station. And I said to the fellow who owned it, I said, I'd love to get an old house around here for a week, you know, with the good weather. And he said, oh, he said, well, my me, me cousin has a house now. And they set me up, and I went into that house. I stayed a week in it. I went to the beach every day. And you know what I did? I did nothing. <laughs> Pure nothing. And then I went down, there was another, at the end of August, I went as far as um, Kenmare. And there's a very nice house, or a hotel there. Uh, it's called the... The, park. the Kenmare the Kenmare Park Hotel. Yeah. Uh, it's run by a fellow called Francis Brennan. It was beyond the telly, <laughs> and I stayed the night in it. And the next morning I met him, and he came over to me, and he said, "Are you Michael Harding?" And I said, "I hope so." <laughs> and he said, "Would you come down and do two days for us in November?" He's having a literary weekend in November. I said, "I would die." So I go down there and I'll do nothing in November. <laughs> I'm getting paid now for doing nothing. <laughs> and I'm going round the country, I have me doing the readings. You know, yeah. the, the, the biggest thing in the book that was successful was the dishwasher story. I told yeah. the story about how the, you know, the, the men and the women have different views of dishwashers. And it's so successful, I, could, I feel I could nearly write a therapy book, you know? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like how to, secret of happiness, how to get on with your dishwasher. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I, th I think actually that, a lot of people felt when they read that, I'm not alone. Yeah. And that's what we look for in a book, isn't it? And yeah. the dishwasher business, I think it made people feel, I'm yeah. not alone. He feels like that. Well, I, I think there's a, seriousness, there's a seriousness to it that, like, I suffered, I said in the book that I suffered from depression, but I suffered a kind of a, a melancholy all my life. And then I ran into a, a really bad burnout and I, I completely collapsed. And ever since then, my life has been kind of falling apart. And uh, I've realised as well that I suffer from a thing, this is since, like the depression is kind of gone. Is it? Yeah. Did the fame cure the depression? It might have. Yeah. <laughs> it might have been you. <laughs> but it, it's, it, what you're left with is a sense of anxiety. You know, you, you worry about too many things. Like, I'd be, you'd be worried about everything. You'd be worried about getting on the plane and, and making sure you have your passport. And you'd be putting too much stress into it that a normal person wouldn't put in, you know? Yeah. And that kind of anxiety is what you're left with. But what I've realised is that people find that funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were laughing at you, though. We were laughing with you, if that helps in, yeah. in, in, in any way. Yeah. Listen, I, do, I suppose another side of the fame thing, now that you're a big brand and everything, is 
you have to have what the marketing people call an online presence now. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, are you're on the Twitter and, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. I'm on Twitter. <laughs> and yeah. the Facebook and, yeah. and yeah. how are you getting on with that? Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good now. Um, again, the problem is that when you're on Facebook, you, you, you know, everybody puts things on Facebook like, um, oh, I'm having a great time and there was a great crowd at me show last night and thank you everybody for the standing ovation and all that. Yeah. And nobody puts think down things like, you know, did the show in, you know, Bally Connery last week, there was, only, like, there was only 30 at it or something. You know? <laughs> if people say, how are you doing? You know, you never say, I'm not doing great. And the fact of the matter is, you know, I'm not doing great. We're, none of us are doing great. You know, yeah. my, my mother is a year dead. She, she died a year last summer, you know. Uh -huh. And sometimes you'd be missing her. You know? I'd say when the mother goes, yeah. it's, it's yeah. the big one. Really, I, go to, I go to the house, like her house is there, and it's an empty house. And when somebody dies, and they leave the house there, you know, you walk into it and you're looking at all her things, and you're wondering, like, what happens then now, you know? Like, what happens, you know, what happens to her clothes? What happens? A whole life that she yeah. collected yeah. up yeah. along the way. Like, <laughs> years and years of woman's own. Yeah. With recipes, you know, the page is marked where she had recipes. Uh, like, what do you, you do? Yeah, you, you have to throw it out. You have to let go of things. Have you done that? Gradually, yeah. Gradually I'm doing it. Yeah, that must be but hard, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's so many things, I think, that keep us worried and anxious, and we don't really share them. You know, okay. like, I, people say, oh, you're having a great time, you're going around and having a holiday, you know, mm. like, I'm being paid for nothing. But I have fierce difficulty at hotels. Like... For, for somebody else wouldn't be worried, I'd be worried, do you know? And, like, there was one, I was over in Galway, in a very nice hotel, and the lady wife was with me, and, like, uh, as you do after the show, you'd have a couple of drinks, and then you go to bed. And, uh, as you would do if you're a man of a certain age after a while in the bed, you get up, yeah. go to the toilet, do you know? Yeah. And, uh, I get up to go to the toilet. And I'm at the toilet. But then I realised, wait a minute, the toilet's over there, because <laughs> I'm still asleep, and it's like I'm, I think I'm at home. Yeah, yeah. And I realise I'm standing on the corridor outside the room. Okay. <laughs> in the top of my pyjamas. Just the top? Just the top of my pyjamas, yeah. I'm very modest when I'm sleeping with the lady wife. Right. I put on the, I put on the top of the pyjamas. I'm going to go for one half of the pyjamas, the, you go the, the, the door lock. the pyjamas, no? The door lock. Yeah. And I have to keep knocking on the train, waking up. And it's amazing how somebody can sleep. <laughs> and eventually, this was in a Galway hotel, eventually there was a door open, it wasn't, it wasn't our door. And you're there and you're thinking of all the money you spent, £175 per person sharing, you know, to get the fancy hotel. Yeah, 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 and you can yeah. hear everybody else enjoying themselves or snoring. <laughs> and you're standing there in the corridor trying to knock the door to get it open. It. And eventually a door opened and there was a woman in the corridor in another room. Yeah. And she opened the door and she said, I suppose you're happy now, you've got everybody awake. <laughs> and I said to her, do I look happy <laughs> in the top of pyjamas? I had to go downstairs with the pyjamas. I, I put it on like an apron. <laughs> and I held it down and I thought, well, if I meet someone in the lift now, you know, somebody's late or God to be, you know, three o'clock in the morning coming from the bar. Yeah. And they're going to look at me. I'm going to say, I was in the leisure centre and I just kind of <laughs> forgot my cob. But anyway, I, got, I had to go the whole way down, and I got as far as reception, and the reception, there was nobody there, they must have been at the dinner in the middle of the night or something. And there was a big glass wall there, you could see the guards outside in Galway, and I wasn't going to have to so I went round behind it, and I phoned the number of the room. I said, Jesus, answer the phone, will you? <laughs> and eventually she answered it. And I said, I... I need you to open the door. Open the door of the room. And she said, Who's this? <laughs> I said, Who do you fucking think it is? <laughs> and that's like, you'd meet people the next day and they'd be thinking, God, you're having a great life, you know, going around. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm worn out by it. <laughs> I'm worn out. And I was in, I was in Medjug, I was in, not Medjug, I was in, I was in Yasna Gorna. Yasna Gorna is in Poland. I was there on Wednesday. Yeah. And it's a beautiful monastery and they have an icon of the Virgin Mary. And I have to say, like, I know that, like, clinging to religion is only depression. 
Do you reckon? I do. And these are you were, the, the for people who don't know, you you were very religious. I still am. So much so that you became a priest. I still am. And, and I have to say, what kind of faith I do you have, have to now? say, when I suffer from anxiety, there's nothing more calm than to go into a church in Warsaw. Yeah. In Poland. It's the first thing you think of. Well, they're yeah. alive there. There's there's an energy in the churches there that's kind of gone here, you know. And you go into the church and you see a big icon of the Virgin Mary, and you just sit there. Now I don't know if that's praying. Or if I'm meditating, or if I'm just sitting there. Yeah. But it's helpful. Yeah. And do you, do you have any? Uh, do you have a faith, a deeper faith? I do. Yeah. Left. What yeah. is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the bus. That's my faith. I don't know what bus is coming along, and I don't know which bus to get, and I'd be worried. Am I in the right shop? Should I be a Buddhist or a Catholic? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, no, I I tell you. In, in all seriousness, I think that my faith would be just being now. You know, this sense of the power of now is a great book. Yeah. And I think that's in all religion, is that we live now in this moment. And if we just... I had a little bit of sickness which gave me a little sense of death impending. And that woke me up to the absolute magic of just being alive in this moment. And I think that whether, I think Christianity or Buddhism or anything will help you into that moment and that's the moment to be in, you know. Okay. And I think if you're on, if you're on Facebook and you're saying, you, you kind of clenched fist with kind of trying to prove that you're successful, uh, I, think, I think let go of that and just be in the moment. Excellent. Yeah. Can I ask you quickly before you go, I believe you're, you're writing another memoir, are you? I am, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redo that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm touring around yeah. with, this, with this book. Still you are, tell us about the new one. The though. new one, I, I don't know. I started it in, in Poland. I went away for three weeks to start writing it. And I think that I'd like to tell the, the sense of loss that I feel about my mother. I think that's, that's a big thing in men. And I think that, yeah. you know, she died a year ago. And I, she didn't... She didn't she was a beautiful woman, you know? Yeah. And like, there was a poet one time, he wrote a lovely, Michael Hart, and he wrote about his mother, he said, I loved you from the day you died. You know? Yeah. And I think that happened to me with my mother as well, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, re I, I very much look forward to that. It's great to talk to you again. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Hart. <laughs> Oh, my next guest is a single mother, actually. She has a full-time job as a care assistant, but in her spare time, she pumps a lot of iron in her local gym. Tomorrow, she hopes to become Miss Ireland trained figure. But please welcome Body 